How about an inexpensive hotspot built and put together and configured by a ham radio operator that's running the new WPSD software? And it's all for a good price. Let's take a look. I was sent this hotspot by Colin K0NNK. He did a video that was on this channel a while back. He sent me a video. I put a call out on Discord for any anybody with a newer or a smaller YouTube channel about ham radio. If they wanted to make a video that I could post on my channel, put it out there and say, hey, you know, get you a little bit of exposure that way. And he sent me a video and we did, a, and, and it was well put together. He did really well. And he's that younger generation of hams, which we all want to see get into the hobby. So he emailed me or he hit me up on Discord a while back and he's like, hey, I've got this hotspot. If I send it to you while I do a video, will you do a video about it? And I said, sure, that's fine. Now, in reality, I'm not too big on hotspot videos lately because they're all basically the same. You've basically got two versions of Hotspot. You got your Pi Star and you got your Shark RF Open Spot. And there's a couple other ones out there. Blue DV is still out there. DV Mega is still out there. And there, there, there's a few others that are not as commonplace, at least not in my experience. But as soon as WPSD came out, we did an interview on one of my live streams not too long ago with Chip, the creator of WPSD, which is a totally new piece of software that will run on a Pi Star type hotspot and that's exactly what we've got here on this hotspot right here is WPSD so this is the hotspot as Colin sent it to me it's got a 3d printed case and he's actually got a newer case and I'll do an overlay right here of the hotspot with the newer case on it it is a dual time slot hotspot UHF dual time slot hotspot which means you can operate time slot one and two on DMR you can operate it as duplex and we'll go through the menus on that here in just a moment you can see that it's got a screen on it, and I know the screen's really small right there, and it's and the and the, the text is kind of moving. And I told him, I was like, I don't really like the way the text moves. You know how it's kind of scrolling across; you can't really read it very well. And he's like, Oh, you can change that in the settings. I'm like, Cool, okay, yeah, that's something to do. But it does tell you the IP address there. I've got it plugged in via Ethernet right here. It's coming up at 192.168. 1.43 right now so if you want to look over here this is what the WPSD digital voice dashboard looks like for KC5 HWB he put my call sign and my and some of my information into it and then I go to configuration there we go have it saved my profile I'm gonna send this hotspot back to him he did not give this to me so which is okay I've got plenty of hotspots I don't need another one and a lot of these hotspots that I'm running PyStar on are upgradable to WPSD. But the great thing about this hotspot is that he builds it for you, he puts it together for you, and it's a very reasonable price, which we'll get to here in just a second, I'll show you. But this is the dashboard hotspot, you know, the host name is PyStar, that's my call sign, that's one of my DMR IDs, so he's got all that in there. He's got it set at 441.4 as the receive frequency and 446.4 as the transmit frequency so you you just set it up in your radio like you're using a repeater it's a dual time slot hotspot made for dmr you can set it to be single time slot only if you don't care about dmr you want to use it on yezu system fusion or d star or, or even m17 wpsd supports the new m17 protocol and we're going to be doing a few videos about that upcoming in another in a at a later date it's using the radio modem of uh mmdvm hs dual band for pi the gpio and you can see different things down here. You can turn on all these modes, including M17 mode right there. Turn on M17 features. I'm really looking forward to using M17. I got a M17 device for my Yezu FTM 6000 that will plug in and turn that radio into an M17 digital radio. Got that from LilyGo. When I had the M17 guys on another live stream a while back, we talked about that as well. So we're going to be doing some stuff on that upcoming. But this is your... Kind of your typical DMR configuration screen here. Brandmeister, DMR Plus, free DMR, HB Link, custom network. If you have an HB Link server of your own that you're connecting your MMDVM server or M MMDVM repeater and or hotspot to a Seabridge, this is all very easy to configure right here, unlike the old days where you had to go into the cont file and kind of edit some files or whatnot, which wasn't hard, but it was a few extra steps. Now it's only the GUI. You can add your HB link or um, DMR link server to this. System X, TGIF, XLS, and general DMR settings right there. You can change the color code right there if you want to. So good stuff on that. We could go through here and uh, configure the Wi-Fi on it if I wanted to. It does come up when you first log into it. It comes up as uh, pi-star is the username and raspberry 
as the default password, which is the same as a PyStar. Even though this isn't running PyStar, when we had Chip on the live stream a while back, I was like, hey, that's a really good idea to keep the login the same because that's what everyone's used to. And he's like, yeah, that's why we did it. So if we come over here, we can see Colin's website. And he's got this hotspot. He calls it the HamSpot4 WPSD DMR YSF NXDN DSTAR M17, all the things. $150. So it comes at $150 pre-configured dual time slot hotspot with this new case that he's got, new 3D printed case on it. And he'll set it up for you if you want. The hotspot is built, created, and supported by fellow amateur radio operator Colin K0NNK. If you have questions or need to email him, here's his email right here. DM him on Discord. He's got his own Discord uh, link right there. So very easy support very easy to get this in your hands get up and running get configured very accessible because he'll answer you either via discord or via email so an easy hotspot to set up and, and and it's a good looking hotspot too this is a temporary case that he sent me for you can see that the the gap there is really big for the screen he's got and he's got it kind of open right there this looks like uh this is a pi 4 because it's got the two uh usb3 blue ports right there so probably not doing anything with pi 5 yet but Presumably, that'll be coming soon. You can run a hotspot on a Pi Zero or a Pi 2. I don't know if you can still get Pi 1 boards or not, but like a Pi 2 board or a Pi 3 or 3B board, you can still run hotspots on all those hotspots. Pi Star and WPSD are not very resource intensive, so you can totally do that on the older versions of hotspots as well. And it makes it easy because if you got extra Pi, Pi 2s or Pi Zeros laying around, you can build a hotspot and put it to use. This video is premiering during the week of Hamvention 2024, and I am doing sponsored videos for LDG during that week of Hamvention because you can save a 20% discount off of everything at the LDG table at the Gigaparts booth during Hamvention 2024. So if you're planning on attending Hamvention and you find me walking around with a camera, stop me and say hello. And if you're interested in LDG products, some really great antenna tuners, stop by the Gigaparts booth and take advantage of the 20% off discount and thank them for sponsoring Ham Radio 2.0. This is what the WPSD main dashboard looks like right here. It'll show you that if DMR is green, the uh, mode and the network status that were both green, Time slot 2 is enabled. I wonder why it doesn't say time slot 1 is enabled. Interesting. Okay. Oh, it's probably setting I've got in there. Anyway, you can go in there and turn that on. If I go in here and change it to... I don't generally recommend using hotspots on multiple modes at the same time. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to turn this on right here. And it's pretty quick to update this. There we go. Now, if we go back to the dashboard... It's going to show those. Okay, so the mode status is all of all three of these are on, and the network status, and it does this, so it will turn red. It did this to DMR at first as well. Takes it a few seconds, not a big deal. You'll see everything turn green here in just a minute. Okay, now there's somebody talking on Yezi right there. Okay, American Link. Okay, so he's got it set up for American Link. There you go. There's traffic coming through on the Yezu System Fusion network. Uh, America Link piped in through uh, a hotspot to the Wires X rooms. You cannot connect to Wires X directly from a hotspot. A lot of rooms, including the room that I monitor the most, which is the Texas Patriots room, they have a separate connection for hotspots that they have tied into their Wires X room. But you can't natively, unless someone has set up that special connection, you can't natively connect a hotspot, an open spot, a Pi Star, WPSD. It won't natively connect to Wires X. You have to have something working on the back end for your hotspot users. And most of these guys with larger rooms that are more popular have this set up. Texas Nexus is set up that way in Texas. Uh, the Texas Patriots room is set up that way. Obviously, America Link is set up that way because I'm connected to it with a hotspot right now. So you can connect to all these. All these are enabled right now. YSF status in room America Link f through FCS 00290 reflector. M17 status through RP RPT is KC5 HWBH. CAN is zero and reflector is M17 M17 Charlie. Um, I don't know exactly what all of that means, but that's something we're going to be looking at very, with a very close lens upcoming on multiple videos when I take my BridgeCom repeater, which is currently running PyStar, and I'm told that you can go in here and do a w, WPSD update and actually update the version of MMDVM, which is running on a PyStar hotspot. So you can update MMDVM which is running in the back end, and then you can update the software 
of Pi Star, of the application, the Pi Star and or WPSD application. The WPSD will let you update MMDVM from the GUI dashboard, I'm told. I don't know how to do that yet, but again, this is something we're going to do because I'm going to update my BridgeCom repeater to WPSD, which has M17 enabled. And it has to be running a later version of MMDVM to do that. So MMDVM is kind of like the operating system. And WPSD and or PyStar is the, the application that's running on top of that system. So we're going to update all of that with WPSD. We're going to turn on M17. Yeah, I've got two M17 radios. One of them's not done yet. So we're going to be doing some actual RF QSOs into M17 with my BridgeCom repeater as an M17 repeater. And we're going to do that upcoming. So I've just updated all this. It's no updates required. So Colin sent this to me with it fully updated. Now, they, they release WPSD updates all the time. You never know when it's going to be updated, but that's all it is, is one click of a button, update WPSD, and you're done. So that's really easy to do. But check out the link in the description below. Thanks to Colin, k 0 K for sending me this hotspot. One of the most common things I get is that sometimes people think these hotspots are too expensive. You know, some of these hotspots are two, three, four hundred dollars online. A lot of the times you're paying for support, and that's okay. I've got the SkyBridge hotspot from BridgeCom. They've got excellent support. They've got a team of support personnel. But Colin's offering support for this hotspot, and he's just one person, but it's, you know, once he gets you going, you won't have to talk to him anymore, so it's going to be pretty easy to do. But this works very well. It was very plug-and-play for me. I've operated a lot of hotspots on the channel over the years, and I'm very happy with this one. So be sure to thank Colin. If you contact him, uh, check out the link in the description below for his website. And if you order one of these, be sure to thank him for allowing me to review this hotspot. If you want to know about any other hotspots and any other types of, uh, well, the M17 videos right now, I'll put those right here. You guys can go check that out. 73, and thanks for watching.